As we begin chapter 3 in this unit, what we want to do is we want to spend some time talking about light and also a little bit about atoms. And the reason we want to talk about light, of course, is that astronomers use light to study um, the universe. Uh, rarely have we been to space. We've sent some probes up into space and into basically our solar system. But if you want to talk about stars, stars are so far away. How do we understand where they are? Well, the answer is, is we have to study light. So before we can really study the light and kind of figure out what's out there, what is light? And how does it work? It's probably more complex than you've thought it before. It's not just the things I can see with my eyes. It's much, much more than that. So with that sled, sled, let's go talk about the light. I've seen the light. Oh, yes, that is true. So podcast 3.1, OK? So we talk about the light, properties of light. So let's talk about the properties of light. Now, what is light? Hmm. Now, you might notice down here I've got this kind of funny looking like wavy thing. Well, let's explain that a little bit. OK, first of all, light is radiant energy. Radiant energy, what the heck is that? OK, what's interesting about light, it does not need a medium for it to travel. OK, it's energy. Now, most energy, you're gonna, we're going to talk about this here in just a minute. Most energy needs a medium. Okay. See, light is like a wave. You see a wavy thing? Well, most waves that you're familiar with, they travel in a medium. When we say a medium, we're talking about like water. Water is a medium. So if I uh, drop a, a rock into a pond, the medium is water, and the energy travels through the water. Or my voice that's, that's projecting right now, the medium is um, the air. And um, it sends out waves. And yeah, so, but light is different it's radiant and it does not require a medium unlike sound or water okay light travels very very fast all right in fact it can travel around the earth seven times in one second seven and a half actually it's very very fast so and this is by the way noted as this is the speed of light we call c the speed of light which is um yeah now, what are the properties of light? Well, the speed of light in a vacuum. Now, that means in a vacuum there's nothing present. The speed of light in a vacuum is denoted by the letter C. Okay, So C is the speed of light, which is this 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. On my previous screen, I go back there. On my previous screen, this is the exact number, but we can just kind of round that to 3.8 times 10 to the 8th meters per second squared or meters per second. But interesting thing happens, and this is going to be important when we talk about telescopes in our next chapter. The speed of light is reduced as it passes through transparent materials. So if I were to have a diamond in my hand, that diamond, light would travel slower through the diamond than it does through uh, a vacuum or, or air for that matter. It's not a lot slower, but a little bit. In fact, that's what gives um, diamonds and precious gems kind of some of their beauty. Well, it gives all their beauty, actually. Okay, so the speed of light in transparent materials is dependent upon the color. So depending on the color of light is going to make a difference. Okay, now this is the final reason the telescopes work the way they do. Again, telescopes is the next chapter, so we'll get into that. All right, now light can be considered uh, a wave. Okay, so a wave looks like this, right? And so we can see this wave, but you might notice that there are, uh, on my uh, wavy thing, that the wave travels both uh, horizontally and vertically. And that is because there's a fundamental relationship between electricity and magnetism. Now, you understand electricity, right? Uh, well, you may not understand electricity. But electricity is electrons moving. And we can use electrons moving to uh, make your computer work, or your iPod, or however you have been watching this podcast. And there's magnetism, which, you know, you know magnets. You've played around with magnets probably before. OK. And here is the key to understanding light, all right? Probably the most important thing to understand here, maybe in this whole podcast, is that there is a changing magnetic field. When you have a changing magnetic field, like basically moving a magnet, it will create an electric field. It will create electricity. And if you have a changing electric field, you will create a magnet. They'll, they call those electromagnets. So if I um, have uh, electricity going through a wire, which all symbolize as E negatives, this will make a magnet. Conversely, if I have a wire and I take a magnet, let's see if I can draw a magnet. I'll probably do a horseshoe magnet. How about that? 
and I move the magnet around, I will make electricity. So there's a fundamental relationship between electricity and magnetism. Electricity makes magnetism, and magnetism makes electricity. That's really the, the gist of it, to understand that. And electricity and magnetism are actually, well, they're actually light. All right. Okay. Now, sometimes we can describe light as a particle. So it's a wave, like we just talked about. It moves in a wave. But it also is a particle. Now, what do I mean by it being a particle? It is a stream of particles called photons. So I might di draw this diagram here in your notes. If I've got a light source right here, if I think of light coming from this light source, it'll come as a stream of tiny particles, little tiny spheres. And they call those spheres photons, photons of light. So it's kind of weird in that light is, acts like a wave and as it moves in um, this fashion, and as a tiny particle, like a, a stream of tiny little BBs or something. It's, it does both. They call that the wave particle duality. Now there's a word, duality, duality. Okay, so each photon particle carries energy. And that makes sense, like if you think of a tiny BB, traveling through space or traveling through the air, and it hits me, ow, how that hurt? Hit me in the head. It would hurt because it has energy, right? So it depends on a couple of things, though. The energy depends on its frequency and its wavelength. All right, let's get this going. So which model are we going to use? Are we going to use the wave model or the particle model? Hmm, it all depends. How's that for exciting? Um, in a vacuum, photons travel in straight lines, but they behave like waves. Subatomic particles also act as waves. Okay, that's, that's electrons, protons, and neutrons. So we call this, the, as I said earlier, the wave particle duality. The duality of particles of nature behave as both a wave and a particle. Okay, here's the key though. Which property of light manifests self depends upon the situation. But in astronomy, we will primarily concentrate on the wave nature of light because um, that teaches us the most about uh, stars and planets and things. So, in galaxies and pulsars and other cool things. All right, here's kind of a funny little quote here from Hard Harding. No one told me that I was going to have to work with her. This, of course, is the photon, right? And here is the wave. You get it? Okay. All right, silly joke. All right, moving on. So, let's talk about um, light as a wave. Okay, so here I have a, a bunch of wave... Um, Waves, yeah, and notice that there's something different about the waves, all right? Which color, colors to which the human eye is sensitive is referred to as the visible spectrum. You see, there are colors that you can't see. Your eyeballs cannot see certain colors. A lot, in fact, you can see very few colors, and the ones that our human eye can detect are called the visible spectrum, okay? If in the wave theory, color is determined by the light's wave length. Now, that word is, sounds complex, Wavelength, but it means the length of the wave. It gets a funny little symbol called um, lambda. This is pronounced lambda. Lambda. It is a Greek letter, and uh, scientists like to have like little symbols for things, and so they like the Greek alphabet, and so we stole from them. Okay. Now, what measurement unit would we use? Now, how long something is is measured typically like in meters. But see, wavelengths of light are very, 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 very short. Very, very short. And so we use a, something called a nanometer. And a nanometer is 10 to the minus ninth meter. That's one billionth. That's one with nine zeros after of a meter. So if we take a meter stick, right, a meter stick, which is approximately three feet, one meter, and I broke that down into a billion little particles, that would be a nanometer, which is really, really small. Red light, okay, if light comes into your eyeball and it's red, and you say, oh, it's red, it's a pretty red dress or a red uh, whatever, um, it would have a wavelength of 700 nanometer. It is the longest visible light that our eyeballs can see. Violet, on the other hand, is the shortest visible light, purple. And uh, that's 400 nanometers. 